Assalamu alaikum. Today we shall talk about operator in quantum mechanics and Schrodinger equation. The wave function of a free particle that is the de Broglie wave for a free particle with momentum p and energy is given by psi equals e to the power i px minus et by a squared. The wave function contains all the information about the system. So, if we like to extract a particular information, we need an appropriate operator. For example, if we like to get down P, we see that the operator that we need will have a partial derivative multiplied by some number. Now, if we take this a squared by i partial derivative with respect to x as an operator and act this operator on the wave function psi we have after differentiation i p by a squared e to the power i p x minus e t by a squared. Now if we simplify then we have p psi here p is the momentum and it's a number. Now we see that we got the momentum when we act this on the wave function psi. So we identify the momentum operator p hat as h cut by i partial derivative with respect to x. It can be written also like this minus i h cut d by dx. Therefore, when the momentum operator acts on the wave function psi, we have the momentum psi. So, we call this psi is the eigenstate of definite momentum. Now, if we like to extract energy, we consider this i h cut partial derivative with respect to time as an operator and act this on the wave function psi. After some math we have E psi. In the same way as we got E with this we identify energy operator E hat equals I h cut d by dt. That is when energy operator acts on the wave function it gives us the energy. Now if we look at these two equations or these two operators we have when the operator acts on the wave function it gives us a constant factor multiplied by the same function. We call this as eigenvalue equation and we write it like this the operator acting on the eigenfunction gives us eigenvalue multiplied by eigenfunction. In symbol it is like this here omega hat is the operator and this omega is the eigenvalue. Now to understand it better we consider two wave functions e to the power a x and e to the power a x square and on both of them we act this differential operator to see which one is the eigenfunction of this operator and which one is not. First consider e to the power a x and we act this operator on this function. So we have a psi that is when omega acting on psi we have a number multiplied with psi. Since we have the same wave function psi we call e to the power a x as an eigen function of this differential operator. Now let us consider e to the power a x square. If we do the same we have 2 a x psi. Now 2 a is a number but x is a function and psi x is also a function. Therefore, when this operator acts on the function, we have a number 
multiplied with a different function. Therefore, psi is not an eigenfunction of this operator. Now, we have so far identified two operator p hat and e hat, but we know that energy is related to the momentum. Especially for the free particle, the total energy is the kinetic energy and the energy is equal to the p square by 2m. Remember, this is actually the kinetic energy. Since the particle is free, it has no other potential. That's why the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy. Now, we want to we want to find out the energy operator in terms of the momentum operator. There, so, for that, we multiply psi from left on both sides of this equation. And we have this. Now, we write it like P by 2M into P psi. Now, we know from the equation of the operator or the definition of the operator that p hat psi will give us p psi. So, instead of p psi, we write p hat psi. That is this one with explicit definition of the operator. Now, there is a question. Can I move this p close to psi? The answer is yes. Because p is a number and we have here a differential operator. Therefore, we can move p close to psi and we write like this. Following the procedure that we did in here, we have finally, after some mathematics, minus a cat square by 2m d square psi by d x square. We see that when this operates on psi, it gives us energy. Therefore, we can write the energy operator in terms of momentum operator as E hat equals minus A cut square by 2m d square by d x square. Now, this can be also write, written like this P hat square by 2m. We can verify that if we act e hat on the wave function psi, we get finally e psi. So, e hat is an operator to get energy. Now, we have the energy operator, two definition of the energy operator. One is in terms of the time derivative, another one in terms of the momentum or the special derivative. If we act both of them on the wave function psi, in both cases we will have energy. That is like this. When this one acts on the wave function, it gives us energy, and when this one acts on the wave function, it also gives us energy. So, both cases we have E psi. Now, we, if we drop the middle term and we write this like this one, and this is the free particle Schrodinger equation. We are calling it free particle Schrodinger equation because when deriving this energy operator, we only consider the momentum because the particle is free, that is, there is no potential. So, in terms of energy operator, we write it like this, I h cut partial derivative with respect to time psi equals E hat psi. And remember, this one is the kinetic energy operator. So, we write it kinetic energy operator T hat equal minus A square T square by 2m d square by d x square. Now, here we consider only the kinetic energy that is E hat is equal to the T hat. But 
if we have a particle that is moving in the potential v x of t then the energy would be kinetic energy plus the potential in that case we can write the energy operator like this minus a square square by 2m d square by dx square plus the potential so that we have the schrodinger equation for a for a particle in a potential v like this one the terms in the bracket is called the hamiltonian operator and we write it like h hat h hat equal the kinetic energy operator plus the potential therefore we have the full schrodinger equation i h cat d psi by dt equals h hat psi where h hat is the hamiltonian and for a particle moving in a potential v the hamiltonian has this form now we need to know another operator is called position operator we define it like this when position operator acts on the function we multiply the function with x so if the position operator is acting on the function k times then we have to multiply x to the power k with the function now the schrodinger equation we learned has this form from here we see that the left hand side has an explicit i now if the wave function is a real number then the right hand side is real but the left hand side is imaginary but that cannot be because a real number cannot be equal to an imaginary number therefore the wave function psi must be complex that is the schrodinger equation forces us the force the wave function to be complex another thing is that here the derivative or the differentiation with respect to time is first order so if we know the wave function for example at a particular time t0 the schrodinger equation allows us to know the wave function at a later time t so in three dimensional the schrodinger equation would be like this in here in instead of x we have written bold r or r vector here nabla square is the laplacian operator and it has all three components we also learned the operators position operator momentum operator kinetic energy operator hamiltonian operator and in three dimensional they will have this form that the position operator will involve all three components momentum operator will have minus i a cat gradient the gradient operator has all three component all three differential uh, differential components and kinetic energy will involve will have the laplacian and we also we, are, we have already seen the laplacian has this form hamiltonian operator will have the kinetic energy plus the potential that's all for today thank you